Welcome to the regular August 14th uh, meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. May I have a roll call, please? Chairman Carson. Here. Council Berry. Present. Council Fritz. Here. Council McGinty. Here. Council Roberts. Here. Council Swift Kayata. Here. Council Watson. Here. Manager McGovern. Here. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have um, special presentations tonight. Hope the cameras will move to our podium. And Nasser, you could actually turn the podium around so that the camera can see you and the students. I sure don't want to be on the camera, but... <laughs> uh, well, we want them to see the students anyway. Okay. Uh, my name is Nasser Sheer, and I'm the member of the Conservation Commission and uh, the essay contest coordinator for this year. Uh, every year, the Conservation Commission, along with the Land Trust, Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, holds an essay contest in lower schools. Uh, on uh, conservation issues. This year the contest theme was, or question was on students' favorite outdoor space uh, or trail in Cape Elizabeth, where it is, uh, what does it look like, describing geographic and natural feature, why is it special to them, and uh, what, what do they do there? What possible threats there are to the property in the future, how will this protect the land, and uh, what impacts will be felt if that special place did not exist anymore? That's a pretty tough question for the kids, I thought. Uh, the person who answered all of these questions, and if we gave the most thought about the subject matter, was is Ashley LaRose, who, is the, uh, who wrote an essay about the Great Pond Trail. In recognition of winning the first place, the Conservation Commission uh, will sponsor Ashley LaRose for one week camp at the uh, main conservation school next year. And this essay will be published, or is probably published in the Cape Coria, both the first place and the second place, so uh, you guys can read more about it out in there. Uh, at this time, I would like to present this plaque to Ashley LaRose, congratulate her on behalf of the Conservation Commission and the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust to Ashley LaRose. <laughs> and we also have a second prize winner, and now I'd like to introduce uh, Agden Williams, who is a member, board member of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust and a fourth grade teacher who will be announcing the second prize winner on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. Arkin. Thank you. It's a pleasure to uh, announce the second place winner. I was uh, delighted to read her essay because I'm familiar with the uh, woods that she wrote about. She wrote an uh, essay called My Wonderful Woods and uh, they really are wonderful. In fact, I just spoke with her and I felt like I learned a little bit uh, more about the so I need to get back there and explore some more. She's seen a little bit that I haven't. But uh, this is uh, Emily Atkins. She wrote a, wrote a wonderful essay about uh, woods behind her home and what she does there in the four seasons of the year and how she'd like to ha see it protected. And uh, so it's a pleasure to present her with a $100 savings bond and a year, one-year land trust membership and T-shirt and a plaque. So come on up, Emily. seems so appropriate to have these youngsters writing about the wonderful lands that we have in Cape Elizabeth. Um, and we are fortunate in Cape Elizabeth to be one of the communities that probably has protected more land than any other community of our similar size and area of the state. 
So it's terrific that they use them, that they see them, and that they can describe them as well as they did. And I hope you'll all enjoy what they wrote, which will be in the Courier. Um, the next item is Town Council Resolution. This is Constitution, Constitution Week, September 18th to the 22nd, and I'm going to have Michael comment on wherever yeah, I will. Is. I will very briefly, Madam Chairman. Every year, the uh, local chapter, Elizabeth Wadsworth chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolu Revolution, asks uh, the local councils in the area to adopt a resolution uh, for Constitution Week. They sent us a, a draft motion that we totally rewrote this year. Uh, <laughs> The, the, you know, we don't always bring, we get a lot of these type things, we don't always bring them forward because you'd be doing them constantly and they wouldn't have a whole lot of meaning. This one seemed uh, particularly appropriate to do as we, as your resolution states, as we look forward to participating in the biennial election of members of the Congress and the quadrennial election of a President of the United States. And what this resolution does is calls forth attention to that, as well as to the Bill of Rights, the 27 amendments to the United States Constitution as well as uh, calling upon all citizens to reflect on the importance of the Constitution as they prepare to participate in the upcoming election. It's very and nice. What, what's really good, what's really why this one's important to do is because you didn't do it last year. And then the, <laughs> the, the, the Daughters of the American Revolution printed a supplement in the newspaper with all the different resolutions and Cape Elizabeth was noticeably missing. So I would encourage you to uh, <laughs> sign it and press to forward it. Swayed by the press again. <laughs> Um, thank you very much. I didn't actually know what that included, which is why I turned that over to the manager, because I didn't exactly know what it was. Um, we have reports and correspondence. The first report will be the town manager's report. Yeah, I'd like to just briefly comment upon a, a number of the activities we've had over the last month, and particularly uh, three, uh, three different events that, that really had to draw upon so many resources in the community. The first was... Uh, the Opsail Main, Main, Main 2000, uh, which I think all of you remember, it seems like a long time ago now, but it was just a few short weeks ago, it was, uh, it was a parade of sail that started off uh, Portland Headlight and continued into the harbor in downtown Portland. And Alan Atkins just happens to, coincidentally to be here this evening. His daughter was uh, just one of the uh, essay contest winners. And anyway, this is, was an enormous undertaking for so many in the community. Uh, you know, Alan and Admiral Rybacki's committee, but it, it also was, was really an undertaking for so much of our municipal employees and volunteers. I added it up, and I think when I finally got all the numbers, we had over 110 employees and volunteers participating in some fashion in that day in helping out with the, with the different activities. Uh, uh, I think we had probably the worst traffic jam ever in the history of Cape Elizabeth, uh, but that that was mainly attributable to the fact that once they get out on our roads, there was no place for them to go. Everything else was clogged up. But everyone was understanding. Everyone really came forward. Uh, I was down the fort 5 a.m. that morning, uh, speaking with one of the TV stations, and even then, the police were were on site. The fire department was starting to arrive. We had the rescue, the fire police unit. Uh, we had some outside rescues, and it was uh, Public Works was there. The, I could go on and on with the volunteers, uh, but it was just a, it was a wonderful event for the community, and uh, I really appreciate all the efforts uh, of our folks, the cooperation, understanding of citizens as they get caught in the traffic, and the, the volunteer efforts of so many in, in Greater Portland, including the vice chairman of the committee, uh, who's who's here this evening. The second major event was a week ago Saturday, and that was the Beach to Beacon Road Race, the 10K, uh, finished by Councillor McGinty and uh, 265 other Cape Elizabeth residents. And again, just uh, tremendous cooperation from the citizens and just tons of support from, uh, from our rescue, from our fire department, uh, from uh, the fire police unit, from uh, the police department, the public works department. Uh, just so many. I could, you know, I shouldn't have started listing names, but uh, just everything came together, and I, I just, you know, with those two events, I couldn't have been prouder of, of all of our personnel. Uh, you know, we thought we were going to have a quiet period thereafter, and then we had an unfortunate tragedy uh, last week with uh, a very, with a very bad uh, car accident. And you know, again, you know, I look at the work that our rescue did with that our fire police unit, our fire department, 
uh, and particularly our police department. And, uh, you know, I was just extremely impressed with their professional efforts. Uh, looked extensively, have looked extensively working with uh, Neil Williams, uh, our chief of police, looking at, you know, everything that we did. Uh, and, you know, I couldn't be any more pleased with the professionalism of the police department. And, you know, with any event like this, there's rumors that go around. And, you know, I've, I've, we, the rumors that were good and bad, we looked into all of them. And in, in every respect, uh, we, we realized, looking at all the reports and activities, that our, our rescue and uh, all of our personnel could not have done more, nor could our uh, police department have acted uh, more professionally. And, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased with their efforts, you know, while uh, you know, it was a tragedy and the result uh, you know, is not one that, that anyone uh, is, is very pleased with, uh, you, know, it, it was, uh, you know, it was good to see in that that, that our people really came through and, as professionals. And, uh, you know, I, I look at this whole thing, all three events, uh, so many helped out, but I particularly look at our new chief of police and the fact that you know, he was appointed as the acting chief just the end of May and what he has uh, you know, done in just a short time. Uh, really want to publicly thank him uh, in particular, but as well as everyone, uh, all of the, the police officers, members of the fire department, public works, and all the different volunteers, fire police unit, wet team, and all these different activities. Uh, they, they really came through, and uh, I just couldn't be any more pleased with their efforts. And it was also good to hear from many counselors along the way, uh, you, know, uh, you know, throughout uh, expressing through email and through calls their appreciation as well. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Are there uh, any reports and correspondence to other councillors? Uh, you, no, you, you oh, uh, well, I just wanted to uh, uh, add uh, m uh, my support to what the manager has just said, and, uh, and also to join Benoit on the Beach to Beacon race, who started the whole thing and has done a wonderful job to put it together. And I have heard comments from other members of other communities who came to Fort Williams and watched the op sale and then uh, watched the Beach to Beacon. And the, uh, the behavior of the crowd was most commendable. I've heard this uh, uh, feedback from uh, members of other communities and it made us very proud of uh, Cape Elizabeth. Uh, a second point that I wanted to uh, just make tonight was that we have an ordinance and while we're on the subject of public safety, uh, we have an ordinance uh, dealing with bicycles uh, in the town of Cape Elizabeth, and I would just like to remind all the bicycle riders that uh, the ordinance does require that uh, bicycles being ridden along the road be uh, uh, single file. Uh, a couple of times uh, it's been reported to me by some people, and I've seen some myself, that uh, some bicycle riders have been riding two, three, sometimes four abreast in a big uh, group. And this creates a safety hazard. We don't want anybody to get hurt. So uh, please remember that when you're riding bicycles on the streets of Cape Elizabeth, single file is the safe way to do it. And let's uh, look to public safety. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Councilor Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I would like to notify the members of the public that the Appointments Committee has an opening on the Conservation Commission, and we will be looking for <coughs> applications. But I want to give a thank you to Bob Harrison, who has served for approximately four years. Bob's uh, started a new business, and his ventures are keeping him away from the, from the commission. Applications are available on the web, or you can contact the manager's office, and they will send one to you that you could return that way. I would also like to uh, thank Ann Elderkin, who has, because of job commitments, has been moving and will no longer be serving on the zoning board. We do have a replacement for her that will be coming up later on the agenda. And I also would like to thank the uh, emergency response personnel for, for the difficult job that they did do and the professional that they handled it. And on a, another note, there's been a number of break-ins and stuff I know a lot in my area of town. I'd like to remind people that uh, even though we live in Cape Elizabeth, you still need to lock things up, folks, before you get them stolen. And I guess that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Councilor McGinty. Uh, Madam Chair, I've been uh, appointed to the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee. We had our first meeting this evening, earlier this evening. It was an organizational meeting. Um, the budget process gets started in earnest, actually the 1st of September. Um, I will keep this board uh, advised and also the citizens through, through the town council of the progress of that, uh, that budget process. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Are there, yep. 
I just want to briefly follow up on Councillor Barry's comments about the bicycles. Uh, we've had two complaints in the last week about the, the pack of bicycles that go through on Saturday morning. And, uh, you know, they have the rights to use the road, but we've had reports of them nearly driving people off the road by failure to stay even in the whole lane, as well as uh, totally violating stop sign protocols and, uh, you know, coming out of Shore Road or going, you know, traversing without yielding to traffic at all. And we plan to welcome them in a special way on uh, <laughs> the next time we see them and uh, remind them of. Uh, that, that the laws apply to them as well. So we look forward to welcoming them, welcoming them and uh, reminding them that they're very welcome to, uh, to take on that activity in our community, but to do it in a safe way that's responsible. Thank you. Is there any other items from councillors? Hearing none, are there any items not on the agenda that citizens would like to discuss at this time? Hearing none, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting in July. Councillor Roberts. Madam Chairman, uh, I would move for acceptance of the minutes with uh, one change. It's a minor one. The uh, Dan Brown lives on Mitchell Road and not Fowler Road. What, what page are you on? Page, uh, page two, yeah. the minutes. Be the last, next, almost the last sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would move for acceptance. With a minor change. With that minor Second. change. All those in favor, any more discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, motion passes. Item number 27, consideration of recommendations from the addressing committee designating Heatherstone Lane and Shipwreck Cove Road. This is just a, a moment to explain. This is, I believe, the last two or three changes we make for a, a road and address change name, na road changes, name changes for the 911 process that we will be beginning very soon. And so the council, you have a letter in your packet. Briefly explain. Yes, you may briefly Just very explain. briefly. Uh, one is we spoke with Mrs. Ms. Ramosa Riley, who had no interest in being Ramosa, <laughs> being living on Ramosa Lane. And we discovered that, in fact, we had aired by sending the notice to a bank instead of to another mm. address since the tax bill was sent to a bank. We didn't really make an error, but it was clear that she had never gotten notice. Uh, so Heatherstone was the name for, if anyone remembers the old Carolyn's, mm -hmm. that's what it used to be called, and that's uh, where this house is. That has historical significance. The second one, uh, Peebles Cove Road, is uh, a little bit changed from your agenda. We, we've been debating all this week whether Shipwreck Cove Road, Shipwreck was one word or two words, is, one who lives on Highview Road and gets asked that question constantly. Mm -hmm. Shipwreck under this proposal would be officially one word. Uh, the third one is uh, we, we discovered just this week uh, as a result of a call from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Robert C.S. Monks, I think those are the middle initials, uh, that we, we hadn't named a little offshoot of a road off Monastery Road that we should have named. Uh, we were very pleased they pointed this out to us. They, they would, uh, we agree that ought to be, have a different name uh, where their home is located. And the 911 committee is recommending, uh, after consultation with the monks, uh, Bacchus Place. Uh, Richmond Island, uh, if you look at real old maps, uh, was named the Ile de Bacchus uh, by Champlain. In fact, I've seen many old maps with that on. It's also in one of the Cape History books. So it's a very appropriate uh, name. Uh, uh, when Champlain first came off Cape Elizabeth in the early 1600s, it reminded him of uh, the old grape-growing regions of, of France. Uh, so uh, that's uh, the origin of the name Bacchus, and uh, that was the original name, and if one looks at all the maps, uh, you would see that. So the, the monks is, uh, would prefer, the 911 committee agrees, uh, that that little offshoot where uh, Robert and Bonnie monks live uh, should be called Bacchus Place. Bacchus is spelled in the mytho mythological ways, B A C. Yes, it's the Greek god of grapes. Grapes. <laughs> <laughs> well, being the only Greek here, I can't even deny because I don't even know. And I do know the name Bacchus. Uh, all right, so that's three changes, and I and I, and I hesitate to. Uh,
Listen to the manager when he talks about Heatherstone as having historical significance, because when I was born right next door, it, it wasn't even there, so I'm old enough for it to have, for, for it to have happened and now be historical. <laughs> it was somebody else's house before. All right, so now we have three name changes, and we hope we're coming down to the closure on the name changes. Uh, Councilor McGinty. I move approval of all three changes. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, none. Thank you very much. Item number 28. Madam. The, these and all other changes are effective September 1. However, we had a discussion today just reminding everyone 911 itself will not be effective until people get notices of it, but the new addresses will be effective September 1. Okay. So, and, and when do we anticipate 911 will be effective? We're really a little bit unsure at this time because uh, some of the work needs to be done by Verizon Communications. Uh, and we were, in, we were informed, I think, Friday that uh, there'll be a two-week further delay than we anticipated because of their strike. And, uh, you know, we're really waiting for the old Bell Atlantic in the state to arrive. And, uh, we don't know. Who is the old Bell Atlantic? Do they have well, name? it's Verizon is, was Bell Atlantic. Oh, yeah, was right. 9X was New England Telephone. You have to be very old to remember all the names of the telephone companies. <laughs> Councillor Fritz, did you? Hi, I'm just thinking that now that we've come to the, uh, hopefully the final uh, changes and, and we now know what the names of the streets will be, if we could um, get some maps together and, and, you know, like get a cog map um, that's large, highlight the changes so that we can become familiar and maybe have something in the library, in the town hall, maybe even at the IGA. I mean, I, I'm a visual person, and so I, I need to look at the, the maps to understand the changes rather than a list. That's what we've had so far. So We'll, we'll get you all maps. We'll also give each counselor and make available limited amount for the public what we give to our public safety personnel that list every name is off this street, is off that street, so that... Uh, Everyone, we, we need to print it up for public safety personnel anyway, so mm -hmm. we'll give them to the council and maybe get about 100, 150 extras for folks that might like to pick one up. I mean, I'm thinking of something large that, that people can see. Mm -hmm. we'll do it. Yeah. And I also like the list that we had, I'm, I'm looking at Chief McGoldrick, the list that we had earlier that said was the ABC road now is, you know, that, that's helpful for me because I did, used to know all the roads. So anyway, okay. You know, like we always now say, oh, that used to be the Bates house, that used That's to right. be the Smith's house, and now it's going to be, that used to be Blank Road. That's exactly right. That's the only way I can associate with it. I won't be able to memorize it other than that. The old right. Berry place. <laughs> Emphasis on old. <laughs> Consider, no, item number 28. Consideration of a request from Fitzpatrick Associates to agree to accept open space in a proposed road that is part of the pending Whaleback Ridge subdivision. Council has a packet in there. Uh, I mean, a letter in their packet that shows this. This is a, now wait a minute. Oh, shipwreck and whale back. Well. Yeah, this, uh, Joel Fitzpatrick is putting up a, a plan, and what the green space shows is what will be deeded, deeded to the town. The new road is directly across from Trundy Road. Mm -hmm. So when you slide down the hill, Penny, you'll have a place to keep going. <laughs> uh, right across the there. And, uh, this has been approved by the planning board. It's been given preliminary approval. It's up to final approval, but before it receives final approval, it's uh, always at this time that it comes to the council for conditional acceptance of any roads and drainage easements that may exist, as well as open space. You can see there's quite a bit of green on there. It certainly is. Joel, do you want to say something? You may have to say it into the speaker, however. Yeah, Joel Fitzpatrick. Okay, there's one up there. Sorry. Fitzpatrick Associates. Um, my company, uh, we're going through the planning board process, uh, like Mike said. Uh, tomorrow night, we're hoping for final approval. It could be into September, but um, this is the R RA zone, and in the RA zone, we can go with the open space zoning. In the open space zoning, you need to... It, you need to donate, the developer needs to donate at least 40% of the land to open space. And this is actually, the green you see here is 47% of the whole parcel. How many lot, what do you have, five houses there, Joel? There'll be actually six, six, six 
it's a six lot subdivision, but there is al al already an existing home on one of the lots. Right. And it's kind of a long story to explain that. I, I might explain to the council <laughs> where this is. If you came down Trundy Road, and went where the new road will be straight across, and you're up on that ridge that overlooks the Alewife land, the open space land that's, that was part of Alewife Farm originally. This is Alewife Brook. Mm -hmm. This is Trundy Road. And this is the new entrance to. Right. Just so mm -hmm. could be. Penelope was, uh, council chairman, was whispering to me. What the council is being asked to do this evening is to conditionally agree to accept the road. You don't actually accept the road until it's built. And to agree to uh, accept the land as well upon final subdivision approval. That's the routine. Because you know, he would conceivably wouldn't be given to us unless they also got final subdivision approval. Right. Uh, Councilor Barry. Could I ask a question? Uh, on the green uh, spur here that comes out to Route 77, is that ledger area, uh, ledgy area there? The, the, ledge, the ledgy area, the high cliff ledgy area is in this area here. This actually is more towards the brook. The brook comes out here, so if, uh, let me see, this is 50 feet, so we're, we're probably about 150 feet from the brook. Where is the dirt road that goes down to the It's right? direct, pretty much directly across the street. Oh, no, the one that goes to Airwalk. Oh, uh, it's on the other side of the brook. It's it's up there. Okay. It's and, and, and this, uh, where your green area is, is that accessible from Route 77? Yes. Okay. I'm just wondering, is there yes. plan to be a road in there? This is going to be a, uh, no, no, a, a trail. On, on Route 77? No, no. This is just to connect uh, the open space to for a walking trail okay. to Route 77. Uh -huh. Thank you. I, I was just wondering if there was any proposal for traffic to turn off Route 77, which is a 50 mile an hour limit? No, no, this is the only, uh, this is a dead end street. This is the, ro this is the new road uh, okay. right here. This right here is just a little walking trail that uh, mm -hmm. will connect from the new subdivision to uh, Route 77. Thank you. You're making an impact in this town. We've got a lot of walking trails each time you do this. <laughs> Councillor Roberts. Joel, uh, it may have been in here, I missed it. How many acres is the open space? Well, the, the whole parcel is, is, is a little over 11, and we're donating 47%, so uh, five acres. Around five acres. And I noticed in the planning board minutes that there were at least a couple of speaker, speakers or neighbors that had had some concerns about where the trails were. Is there, have there concerns been uh, resolved and does that space link up with anything else going towards old ocean house the this little parcel this little strip right here was part of my land uh, Peter Carlisle and uh, Tinsman um, one of the Tinsman's own this home here and we, we there was a lot of discussion they, they really didn't want this trail to go through their their property so I trade I'm, I am actually if this is approved. Um, we are trading. I'm trading him this strip for this little strip that he owns here. Okay. And this connection, this connection, uh, the trail was actually going to go through here. Um, this connection leads to leads to nothing. Um, you know, someday maybe. Um, and actually, this this leads to nothing, right? This leads to Route 77. Great Pond is over here, and there's a lot of trails on Great Pond. So, this I believe is a little nicer, uh, a little better, just because it's uh, more proximity to those trails. They're actually, this won't connect to them because this is private property across the street, but it does get you closer to Great Pond. But the road itself does give a public right of way out to Old Ocean House Road. Right, the road itself does. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, coming down the other way. So yes. Here. Correct, all right, good, thank you. Councilor Fritz. I, I'm just wondering about all the, say, the narrow portions of the open space and where the trail would be. Are they all passable? I mean, are they good they trail possibilities, trail. or is it wet? Or And will you be improving and making the trail? No, the, trail, the trails, uh, they're going to be footpaths. Um, with the planning board, uh, in the town planner, we have talked about this. We really don't want to disturb much of the land. So walking trail, meaning just people with their feet beating the, the trail. Um, the town will, will own this land. It'll actually, it's actually going to be uh, public 
open space, not private. So I would think that if the uh, Conservation Committee or the um, Land Trust would uh, want to improve uh, some of these, some of these tra this trail, uh, then that would be a town issue. I think the other, the other point that in addressing your, your question, the reason for that long, narrow strip across the top and back of all the lots is that the planning board wanted to protect there's a, there's a beautiful tr line of trees along there, and they wanted to maintain that buffer as much as possible so you could not see these homes uh, as you looked across the farm fields at Old Ocean House Road and as you looked across the farm fields, uh, Jody Jordan's farm there uh, from Route 77. The intent of this open space is not so much for walking as to maintain a, uh, a, a good visual buffer uh, for, the farm, for, the, right. for the farmland. And to answer another part of your question, also, no, the, 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 this, this open space is not wet at all. It's, it's nice, high, dry, um, beautiful property. It gets a little wet down here, uh, but it's passable. There's actually a path right there right now. Any more questions from the council? Is this going to encourage people to walk across Route 77, I wonder? going to be a troublemaker here, but it seems to go right out on the Well, I think they're connecting. I think yeah. what the town's uh, plan is to connect most of these trails eventually, and most of them do cross, cross roads. Well, we'll have to build a tunnel under Route <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we could. Yeah. Put a fence on either I side. We could actually do it on that road. Mm. Which I have also proposed as a plan for the town of Wiscasset. <laughs> <laughs> no further questions from Council to Joel? I'd move that the council accept the donation of land and uh, in, in theory or practice, whatever the term that the mission use, conditionally, and the, uh, the road as well. Second. Is that covered? The, the minutes will reflect the, Thank the you. appropriate action for this Thank point. You. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. It carries unanimously. Thank you very much for coming, Joe. Thank you. I have another question, but I couldn't reach it today. <laughs> it's all right. Um, item number 29, consideration of request from the fire department to raise funds for two thermal imaging cameras. Um, we have a letter in our packet about this, and we also have our fire chief, Chief McGoldrick. Would you like to say a few brief words about your thermal imaging cameras? I, I believe you have the uh, um, correspondence uh, from myself reference to the thermal imaging camera. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that um, we have, we're ready to uh, institute two committees to work on this. Uh, one committee is going to be uh, chaired by Gilly, and he's going to do the uh, technical aspects of uh, looking at the different cameras. He's got a committee already working with him, uh, and actually they've been doing that for about the last six months. Then I have another committee that's going to uh, uh, spearhead the uh, fundraising. And I'm here to answer any questions um, that you might have. I believe during budget hearings, uh, we talked about the thermal imaging camera. There was some strong interest by a couple of council councillors, as you've noted, and uh, we hope to uh, kick this off Fire Prevention Week. Thank you. Any questions from council? Councillor Barry. Uh, yeah, Chief, uh, it says the approximate cost is $50,000. Is that a piece or for both? No, that, that will be for both. So and about $25,000 a piece. That's right, and I, uh, 25 is a little heavy, but we've Right. What we figured if we got that, we'd use that for any expenses that might be occurred for the fundraiser and also any repairs that might happen sure. uh, if they got bounced around. And one in uh, the center of town and one over at Engine 1. That's correct. And you can number me along the, among the councils who are strongly in favor of this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Is there any more questions of the chief? Fire Prevention Week is when? October? Yes. Uh, so is the week with the eighth or ninth in it. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to ask one more question. Councilor Barry. Uh, 
as far are you going to put a the thermometer uh, showing the donations? Uh, Would you like to have a thermometer in front of the firehouse? <laughs> I like the thermometer. I like the thermometer. <laughs> I'm really in favor of some thermometers. Okay, with I'll, pa amounts I'll pass that along to the committee. <laughs> the top. I like that too. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, who's going to spearhead the um, fundraiser? I'm sorry. Who's spearheading the fundraiser? Out of Chappelle. Okay. Any more questions to the chief? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. What was moved? Moved that we oh, authorize. approve. Authorize the yes. raising of funds for the two thermal imaging cameras. You got it. It was moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Oh, discussion? Yes, I just wanted to. Sorry. I didn't realize we had just questions there. Um, like Henry, I'm one of those councillors who was willing to put his money where his mouth was, too. I think the town really needs this camera, and I would strongly encourage other citizens to, uh, when this fundraising begins, to uh, dig deep and help us get this thing on board. It may be your life or someone that you love's life that's saved by this piece of equipment. On February 17th, it could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Um, <coughs> item 30, consideration of a proposed town council goals for the year 2000-2001. Historically, the town council uh, gets together at a workshop and tries to come up with, each, each of us tries to come up with goals that we think the council should try to address during the upcoming year. We have our list prepared. We've worked it over a few times. I think I'm not going to read this list tonight, but it will be up on the town on the net. I say that like I know exactly what it is. <laughs> on the town's web page uh, for anybody to read. Uh, we've given them a lot of thought and we will work hard to, um, to achieve the goals that we've set for ourselves. It's a hardworking council and I think we will probably achieve them as we've set them out. So that's only a note for the public, and I would like now the council to act on it. Councillor Barry. But I have a couple of questions. Uh, uh -huh. On the first uh, uh, dot here, it says modify the budget process to include quarterly review of revenues by the Finance Committee, mm -hmm. which is fine. But I said that also uh, expenditures to date versus the budget, that is, we can tell how much was budgeted and how much has been expended to date, mm -hmm. or, uh, either quarterly or month to month. And I think that the the school department does that, I believe, and uh, I, I think that would be helpful in uh, tracing our progress through the course of mm -hmm. the year to, to know where we are. We can do that. The budget. Certainly. And the fourth uh, line, down, fourth paragraph down, it says review in March 2000. I think it means 2001. Oh, yeah. Because March uh, 2000 we've already had. True. Good catch, Henry. For those of us of memory slipping, I wouldn't have, you know, it's a good thing you reminded me. That. Well, I'm that kind of a guy. <laughs> Yes. And uh, as, as far as uh, number nine, um, uh, continue ever efforts to provide dog exercise areas on municipal and state property within the town. I, mean, I think that's a good idea. I, I'd like to ask a question. When does the, uh, the Crescent Beach lease expire? I believe that was a 99-year lease, was it not? It was pretty cool. No, it was less than 99 it's years. It's no, well, soon, eight years from now or something. Yeah. Just what Councilor Barry is speaking of is as you enter Crescent Beach State Park, right. on the right of the entrance road and yep. the high land above the beach is not in fact owned by the state, it's on a lease from the no, state we, park. It's mainly used for cross-country skiing and some right. trail work. Yep. Uh, that is in about 10 years or less, I don't know the exact date I can find okay. out, but it is a lease from the, the state. Uh, the beach itself is owned by the state? The beach itself is owned by the state. Thank you. And just one quick question uh, on number 11. Uh, review the impact of the pra practical difficulty uh, zoning variant standard adopted by the town council in July 2000, last month. When is that review uh, it, it to uh, take place? Well, just during the during the year, we can talk about how it's going. It's what we actually recommended uh, is, right. is that we would find out if there's any problems right. between now and the end of the year. We'll have some periodic updates. But I also have failing memory, but I thought that uh, Councillor Roberts had said perhaps in one year. Well, wrong. it'll be during this one year. Uh, oh, I thought uh, you know. at the end of it. Uh, well, it was uh, enacted uh, last month in July 2000, so mm -hmm. by 2001 we want to have a... Uh, in a year from now, yes. Yeah, so we can just change that to 2001. 
Oh, no, that's the 2000 no, no, no. we adopted. That's when it was adopted. Yeah. We wouldn't have enacted it yet. Confused me. Confused me, <laughs> Councillor Barry. You, you could okay. just say by the end of the year, by the, right. the fiscal year. By the end of my Bye. term, Goodbye. you'll do it. <laughs> well, I'm mine too. No, but uh, I think uh, the, the, the end of June uh, 2001 would be a good time to uh, really look at it. We just want to know if there's any problems right. and how it's working, that's all. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? No. Is there, is there a motion? It's, sir, it, there is no motion on the table. We've had our discussion before the motion. I'd, I'd like to move that we adopt the proposed town council goals for the year 2000-2001. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Now, is there any further discussion? Is that with these amendments? Yep. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. <coughs> now you can go again. This is a, item number 31, consideration of a report from the Appointments Committee. Councillor Roberts. Madam Chairwoman, uh, the Appointments Committee is bringing forward this evening uh, a recommendation that the full council approve uh, Dr. J. Chatmus for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Dr. Chatmus has previously served on the School Town Technology Steering Committee, and we give him our full-hearted recommendation. It is for it to complete a Ann Ellican's term, therefore it will uh, be for one year and four months. The term will end on January 1st of 2002. I believe that he would then be eligible to, for two additional terms based on the amount of time that he's serving this one, if he was so inclined. Um, so I would uh, like to move that uh, the council appoint uh, Dr. J. Chatmus uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I second it. It was a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Any more discussion about the appointments proposal? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Motion carries. Is there any items not on our posted agenda uh, for citizens' discussion? Hearing none, we'll move on to item number 32, which is the Council consideration for a request from the town manager to enter into executive session to discuss land acquisition matters. I'm, Madam Chairman, I move that we go into executive session to discuss land acquisition and disposition matters. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? You can't so move. You have to second. <laughs> That's true. I second. That's true. Thank you, Henry. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, you, there will be a, a discussion following the executive session on potential future workshop dates for the council, and those dates will be posted uh, as well in the usual places. We'll be returning from executive session to have that one last item, which is a housekeeping item for the council to set dates in our calendars. Um, so we will not need the cameras Thank you.